Hi, uh, I'm Charlie Stoles, president of the USA Board for PAZAPA. Now, it happens that PAZAPA is a center for children with disabilities in Jacmel, Haiti, which we thank Delmar Presbyterian Church's outreach for generously supporting. Uh, Nancy, my wife and I, have been involved with this organization since our son Jonathan worked there in the Peace Corps uh, in 1996 to 98. When we lost Jonathan to a brutal cancer at age 33 in 2007, he left us with more than broken hearts. He left us with an outstanding example of a life well lived. A life is far too short, and it was dedicated to helping those in need. Now, I should tell you what Pazapod does. I'll try to go through this quickly. The critical things is it is a center that delivers special education to over 130 children who are cognitively impaired. It has a deaf school for 35 deaf students. It reaches five rural communities with rural outreach to children with disabilities. It provides economic opportunity for the families through small business loans called microloans, vocational training, and an art program. It sponsors medical clinics by visiting professionals who give neurological and orthopedic care. And it advocates in a country for the disabled, in a country where children who have disabilities are considered voodoo cursed. Its services are free. I want you to understand uh, that it's not an orphanage. Its purpose is to provide support to families so that children are not thrown into or warehoused in ill-run orphanages. Without a pas a pas, children with disabilities in Haiti, I'm borrowing a phrase now from Nina Nichols, are they are the last, the least, and the lost. So whatever does pas a pas mean? Well, it is a Creole word, pas a pas, step by step. And its mission, I've gone over the basics, are to treat, to educate, to develop, and to advocate for children with disabilities to integrate them into the community at large. So where is Jock Mill? Well, Jock Mill is a town on the southern coast of Haiti, approximately 40 miles from the capital of Port-au-Prince, but separated by a high mountain chain, so that it's about a three mile, three hour drive down to Jock Mill. Uh, it's a city of about 40,000. Um, following the earthquake, we were successful at building a new center. Uh, thanks to the aid that was given to us uh, by donors in the US, we bought land with clear title. And then thanks to a large German philanthropy, uh, money was given that enabled us to totally rebuild. Uh, so we have a new building now. Uh, and new classes and so on. But all does not go all that well in Haiti. And more recently, there have been crises in Haiti. Uh, in particular, a long sequence of economic problems have came to a head. No oil, the oil was cut off, energy resources, transportation, uh, people, there was riots in the streets and roads were blocked. There was hyperinflation. Basically, the, the country came to a lockdown standstill. This was a, this was a riot. <laughs> yes, Black Lives Matter in Port-au-Prince, too. Um, in addition, at roughly this time, uh, the U.S. government cut back a critical food program that was in a 25% decrease in the U.S. budget to Haiti, worsened Haiti's already uh, insecure food. It was a food program that was enhancing domestic food production of important things like meat and fish and vegetables, providing incentive of the people to the people in Haiti to buy them, and it was eliminated. So what have, have we done? Pazapa has stepped up. It stepped up with food distributions to families of the disabled in May 2010. To, this is roughly to 100 families in our outreach areas. Oh, and by the way, at just roughly this time, COVID was coming on. So our vocational instructor uh, and others involved with her sewed face masks for our 
staff, for our students, and to sell to the surrounding communities. This is the nurse explaining uh, uh, precautions that should be taken at the time of the food distribution. Even so, school reopened in fall 2019 following these massive demonstrations, but like everywhere else, including our country, school closed about the 1st of April. The plan is with, to have it reopen with social distancing roughly in September. So Pasapa is going, but there are problems. What about the health of our children? Well, even so, in April, the neurologist came down, examined something on the order of 100 children with seizure disabilities, prescribed medicines, and we provide something on the order of $4,500 worth of anti-seizure meds to keep 100 kids safe and able to go to school. We also have a club foot program. Again, that's going. But life is rather more difficult. And uh, in Haiti, this is Haiti, one can say that it's been a dark time, but the darkness is being overcome. And it's being overcome thanks to Pazapa and to the people who donate to keep Pazapa going. So thank you very much for the opportunity of letting me talk to you about Pazapa. And thank you very much, Delmar Presbyterian Church. Thank you.